So I've been having some problems with um, air getting into my plumbing and it'll sputter, my pipes will sputter air like when I'm taking a shower or something. And I believe the problem is here, you can see there are two lines. This one goes to the hose, the hoses. This one goes to the house. And uh, there should be a one-way valve here and there wasn't. And you can see I just installed one here. And I'm also going to put another one-way valve in here. And that should prevent, what will happen sometimes is air will come in from the hose, and it'll backflow, and get into the house plumbing. So, there's what it looks like with a one-way valve in place. And I'm about to install this other one. And you can see there's a, let's see, can you see that? Not very well. Well, there's a little arrow right where my thumb is that I don't think is showing up on camera, but it, it indicates the direction of flow. This is a one inch fitting. My faucet down here is a one inch fitting, the valve. And this is three quarter inch pipe. So this will go in. This is the direction of flow is this way, the way I'm pointing. This will screw into the faucet, and I have this reducer, one inch down to three quarter, which is going to go right there, and then by the time I put all that stuff in there, I'm going to be about to here where this elbow is, and uh, they were out of street elbows. You can get an elbow that has this threaded male on one end and female on the other, and they were out of them, so I'm going to have to make one with one of these and an elbow. So that's going to go up like this. And then my pack setting. Threaded to packs will continue the line. And then I'm going to put my insulation, pipe insulation back. And uh, that should fix the air leaks. So if you have air leaks in your plumbing, um, check to see if you have one-way valve if, if you happen to have a separate line at least like I do for the, the hoses. Now one of the problems I've had all my life is I only have two hands uh, so I'm not going to be able to hold the camera and do this at the same time but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is unscrew this uh, fitting from my valve here that's where my one-way valve is going to go. Um, now since there's a valve there I should be able to just hold that with my hand get enough leverage to unscrew this but you could also use another channel lock hold it this way and if you're using a channel lock or even a pipe wrench there's a specific way to use it since I'm unscrewing it I want to use it like this and because uh, it's going this way if I was screwing it in I'd want to go this way so I'm going to put the camera down and uh, unscrew the valve well I was wrong one of those rare occurrences. Um, I, I did not have enough leverage, so I had to use a second channel lock, holding it this way, preventing this from turning, and that one. And I was able to unscrew the fitting here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and push this out of the way and uh, pop my one way valve in there. Here's my uh, assembly. It's uh, fitting to connect to the, the valve. One-way valve. Oh, there's the arrow. Can you see that? Right there. And then reduced down to um, three-quarter inch male fitting. And I'm going to screw that in. And then continue with this. And there it is so far. All tightened into place. Now you notice I'm using this Teflon tape on all the fittings. 
very important. If you don't use that, they're going to leak. Almost, almost guaranteed that they're going to leak. So don't forget your Teflon tape. In fact, I probably have 85 rolls of this stuff because every time I'm always paranoid I won't have any or I won't be able to find it. But it's like 99 cents. So 99 cents to prevent having to drive back to the store. It's a good deal for me. Now you want these pipe fittings to be very tight and generally, you know, compared with working on a car, um, you want them tighter than you would normally tighten a bolt for fear of breaking it. You're not going to break these probably. At least I've never broken a pipe fitting. But now in the case of this elbow, not only do I want it tight, I want it pointing up. Okay, and now I'm going to put the PEX fitting on there, measure it where the PEX needs to be cut. And hopefully I'll have enough play in it to slip it over. Okay, so you can see I'm able to move this up and down pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this um, about right about here. should clear the fitting that's already in there. And what I use, you could always use a hand saw or something, but I like to use this as a PVC pipe cutter. It actually works better with PEX than with PVC, if you ask me. But this works really well. And uh, by the way, if you ever do any kind of plumbing and PEX is not in your life, your life is unfulfilled. This stuff is awesome. Throw your PVC away. I still use PVC sometimes if I have to, but PEX is far superior, really, to just about anything else out there. And by that I mean it's um, less likely to freeze. Um, it's very easy to work with. You can also uh, connect it either to PVC, to uh, regular steel pipe, or copper, um, using various fittings. Uh, the type of fittings I'm using here are these uh, um, compressed these fittings that require this band here. And uh, let's see what that looks like. This copper band, and there's a special tool, which I forget how much this tool costs. You can see it's had, mine's had quite a bit of use. Um, a little surface rust. I don't, I don't remember how much these, maybe $28, something like that. But it's well worth it because you can use different fittings that don't require this tool, but they are very expensive. And uh, this is by far the tool will pay for itself in no time if you ever have to do much at all. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and uh, slip this over there, slip the pecs on the fitting, and then we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to take my crimping tool, and it's got two holes, one for half, one for three-quarter. I'm going to put this over the three-quarter inch and then pull these handles together as, as tight as I can, well, until they, until they close. Um, it takes a little effort, and that'll do it. Now they do have a a little tool you can use to check your fitting to see if it uh, worked or not. Um, you know, whatever. I have never, and I mean never, ever had one of these fail. So I don't even bother with it anymore. I just turned the water on. So let's see. Maybe we'll get lucky and this will be the time it fails, huh? Okay, let's let it rip. I'm going to turn the water on. We'll see if it worked. I got a leak. I got a leak right there. I'm going to have to tighten this baby up. Try it again. I was lecturing you on how important it was to tighten your pipe fittings. I wasn't using these. Especially this one here. What feels tight with the channel locks feels loose with this. I should have just used that from the beginning. All right, well, there's what it looks like all done. Now, let me say that I'm pretty sure this one-way valve was not needed. I think that's overkill. I know that when you have a water line, you know, for irrigating, watering, uh, you're supposed to put a one-way valve on there because the hose itself can suck air, especially if the hose is uphill. I don't think I need it here, but uh, 
what the hell they're cheap and uh, I'm getting ready to rent the house again so I just want to make sure that that problem is taken care of from reading the bulletin boards I know that uh, a lot of people are of the, of the opinion that you should never reuse a plumbing fitting ever okay no point acknowledged another thing I know from reading the forums out there is that people say this tool doesn't work it does work they don't know how to use it if they think that so I'm going to show you how to remove a PEX fitting suppose you want to reuse the PEX fitting take the tool put it in here like this now I'm going to push down on this so I had to use two hands to push that but now you see it's it did cut there but people have trouble I guess I guess the problem is now getting this thing off and they say nah it didn't work well duh what you have to do now is take this tool and come back and I'm gonna stick it in there again and squeeze it several points around here and then I'll show you what that looks like you can see when I did that see it it popped it out and now it's it's easy to take off now you can use the same tool and also cut this thing I'm gonna do that now okay so I did the same thing I took the tool and I crimped it and moved it a little bit again press down on it again and now this thing pops right off of there and so you ever re read on the forums you should never ever reuse a plumbing fitting well you know I don't know it looks good enough to me I'd reuse it but that's your decision but you read as I have that this tool doesn't work don't listen the person who wrote that didn't know how to use it and now you do so I hope you find that useful well.